Now, of course, while the processing of in a, uh, the AI robot is the main component, they've also placed emphasis on creating a more uh, humanoid look to create some uh, to create something that would be what they deem as more welcoming. This is something that they've uh, brought up with this this study uh, that we're going to talk about, where they think that if it if a robot has more human-like features, it will be less creepy and people will be more welcoming to them, allowing them in their homes. I don't know about you, but it's the exact opposite to me. If I see a computer or a robot that looks more human, I'm even more freaked out and I, I want it further away from me. I'm definitely not going to be welcoming that thing. Um, coming out of Stanford, because everything great comes from Stanford, coming out of Stanford, researchers have created a layered synthetic material that self heals similar to human skin. Uh, the co-author for the study, Sam Root, says this thin film sensor material will selectively heal itself to restore function if punctured, sliced, or cut, just like real skin. I've got a picture of this too. It's great. Let's take a look at this thing. Isn't that fantastic? Now, you might not be able to read the little thing at the bottom. It kind of explains it. It says, a depth profile digital microscope photograph, so that's just the photograph that it took, is a five-layer alternating laminate film of immiscible dynamic polymer films. That's the, just to make it easy, that is that uh, synthetic uh, film sensor that the guy was talking about, which has been damaged. And it autonomously aligned and self-healed and then was pulled apart on a non-self-healing subject to show the location of the damage. So the non-self-healing stuff you can see was pulled apart and the stuff sitting on top realigned itself and healed itself. I mean, we now have this skin stuff that is now healing itself on this. A synthetic self-healing skin was reported back on 2012, but it still required manual repair by humans. So this is something that they've been working on for a very long time. Um, but specifically, they've now made a breakthrough where the skin will heal itself. Um, this iteration doesn't require any help and will automatically uh, self-align and restore functionality on its own. Using silicone and, here we go with the names, uh, polypropylene, propylene, propylene, polypropylene, glycol, uh, or PPG, uh, has a mechanical and rubber-like property. And if you warm it to temperatures, uh, warm it to a certain temperature, it will soften and flow together before solidifying as it cools. So basically, if you wrap this skin around something and you cut it, um, the skin can fully heal within 24 hours if you heat it up to 158 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you leave it at room temperature, it will heal itself in a week. That is insane. This is, this is not stuff that we're supposed to be doing. This is just not stuff that we're supposed to be doing at all. Um, so what they said with this skin, they're, they're developing it right now. It's self-healing, but they're develop developing it to the point where it could be multi-sensory. It'll be able to uh, actually understand pressure, touch, heat, uh, and all these things. It will be able to recognize that stuff. So if you attach that to a robot that has, say, neuromorphic computing and you wrap it in the skin, it'll be able to recognize all these things that it's doing, and it'll be able to take care of that. Whether if, if there's pressure on it, it'll be able to withdraw. If there's heat on it, it'll be able to like drop something. If it's holding something hot, it'll be able to do that. They're also talking about how this is the next step towards indestructible robots, and they're specifically talking about robots to fight in wars. That's great. Let's make an arm... Uh, a world filled filled with armies full of indestructible robots. Nothing can go wrong with that, right? Um, and then they're also talking about self... This is where it gets really bad. Self-assembling robots 
for non-invasive surgeries. They're talking about they can send this type of stuff into somebody without, you know, cutting into them. And the robot will self-assemble itself inside the body and be able to do a surgery that way. No. Uh-uh. Not happening. I want nothing to do with that. Um, so, yeah, this is what we got. We're, we're getting a huge look at the next step of what they're trying to do with melding man and machine with transhumanism with trying to attach i mean we're at the point now where they're not only trying to put this stuff in people they're trying to just full-on replace people with this stuff and i take this as a sign of yeah we're seeing what's coming how this could be used as far as reaching again the godlike status about getting back to the tower of babel type of thing what they're trying to do but i also view this as a step of the advancement of technology now remember this is stuff that they're showing us this is stuff that we're allowed to see get they've got stuff that is far beyond far advanced i mean stuff that we couldn't we couldn't even imagine in my opinion i don't think we can imagine some of the technology that they have sitting behind closed doors that we don't get to see that are at least 10 years advanced from what we see right now. So I look at it this way and I go, Oh my goodness, if they've got, they're showing us this and then they've got that stuff. That's 10 times more advanced behind the scenes that we can't see. And we're still here. We haven't hit the rapture yet. And as fast as technology and AI is moving right now, every single day, we're getting to the point where if the rapture doesn't happen, we're going to go beyond the technology of revelation. And that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. And so as fast as this technology is going, as fast as it's moving, this is the stuff that we see. It's just another sign that we're in the season where the rapture is going to happen. Not predicting anything, but this technology stuff is going so fast, is advancing so rapidly. It's not going to go past what we see in Revelation. And it just, again, what we're seeing now compared to what we can't see is just, it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing. There is a massive pursuit of melding man and machine, but also creating synthetic humans. And again, this reminds me again of another predictive programming. It reminds me of Blade Runner. I don't know how many people have seen it. Um, where there are humans and synthetics walking around on the streets. And it's so advanced that even the synthetics do not know that they themselves are robots. They have the ability, the look, and the brain function of being able to believe that they are actually human when they are synthetic. They are robots. They don't even know that they're robots. How much longer until they've got robots in real life that don't know that they're robots? Now imagine a demon taking over said robot. You want to talk about the next step of possession. That's that's some bad possession right there. And I say it all the time. I cannot believe that we're seeing what we're seeing right now. Now, I don't declare to be an expert at anything, at anything. But my, oh my, the things that we're seeing now, I never thought we'd be seeing. And so while we're still here, while we're still here, we have to stay focused on what we are commanded to do. Our generation is a blessed generation. And we're given two things that we're supposed to be doing right now. We need to warn people of what is coming. We need to get people to Jesus and Jesus to people. 